Alright, glad to have you back, and immediately we're moving to something else entirely. Something completely new. It's a new level. Now first off, as a rule of thumb, for this new level, when you go for a matador, they get behind you. And it sort of fools you into thinking that you can get it. Go right, left, not get it. Go left, still gets to your side. You see, your reflex as spy tells you that from a certain distance, once you change directions, you can get behind somebody. But that just doesn't happen here. It just stops. So once you figure that matadors don't work, you go for circle strafes. And your reflex while circle strafing is telling you that something like this is going to happen. But then you go and you try it on some people and... Let's uh, try this again, just like this, and uh, he's supposed to strafe into me, isn't he? Ah, screw it. Let's just go back to that medic again. It's just that. Uh, oh, almost got him. Ah! Uh, he sort of just backed away, but wait. If he shanks and backs away, isn't he supposed to back up into me as long as I'm circle strafing? What is happening? So, once you figure matadors don't work and circle strafes don't work, you just start using them both randomly. First a matador, then a circle strafe, and you keep thinking that you're going to get it right before you fail and die. There are two scenarios. One is that you don't collide with them at all, and the other is that they get behind you if you decide to change directions and go for a matador. They sorta of just keep running after you, but then at the last moment, they get to your side. So you try to time it so that you get in front of them, but that doesn't work either. And all of that while your reflex, your innate reflex as spy is telling you that you're going to get them. So you think to yourself, okay, good players don't fall for trick stabs, but this is hardly the case. It's just that so far you were just randomly throwing what you can do at them. It's not that they're better or any good at all, it's just that they're moving in a way that your movement doesn't counter. The point of circle strafing is matching your movement to another's. It's only when you understand this that you can start getting things done. And damn, I really learned this the hard way. Now when I put all these clips here together and lump it all together for you to see, it's easy to understand what's happening. But these videos used to be just very theoretical because I kept finding holes in it, people who moved in ways that I could not understand. And it was because of the guys on this next level of strafing. This is the fourth level of strafing. Strafing away. People who are strafing away are, to put it simply, people who are trying to get around you. And you can get them with a stab that consists of going forwards and backwards. It's the level 4 stab. Essentially, this is what you're doing to them. But it gets a lot more complicated than just that. A hell of a lot more complicated. So, let's get started. Now, if they're not already trying to get around you from the side like that guy, what you want to do while fighting them is to open up the space for them to go around you. Here I strafe over to the right, I give him the space to strafe around me from the left. And I want you to remember this arrow. I want you to get used to the idea of people going around you like this. Again here, I air strafe to one side, and I open it up for him to go for the other. See where he looked? Get used to the idea of him turning while going around you. Now while you do this stab, sometimes the guy will fly forwards making it look kind of like a matador. Happens because he held W by accident at the last second. But most of the time, people will gravitate backwards because they're not going after you. They're trying to get to the space behind you. They're not trying to hit you in the back, they're trying to be careful. That's why the stab can extend into a backpedal stab when you move back with them. Now because people don't actually want to get anywhere near you while doing this, they're gonna take wider circles around you meaning that you're going to have to adjust yourself to what they're doing. If a person consistently pulls sideways more than average, you're gonna have to modify your stab in order to get him. For example, had I gone forwards and backwards here, I wouldn't have gotten him. 
What I had to do here is to go sideways and backwards to compensate for him pulling sideways harder. Again here with this guy, he pulls sideways very hard. I go forwards, sideways, backwards. You just have to slightly modify how you're starting the stab. Other than that, there's also a matter of correcting yourself in case you go for it at the wrong timing. Failing this stab is very easy. Here I know this scout is behind me, I turn around, I go forwards and backwards, and he gets behind me. He's not coming anywhere near this staircase, but the next time I get near him, I go forwards, backwards, and he's too far away. And I just barely managed to do it again to correct myself. Had I not done it, he would have just turned around at me. But it's not all about better players or you failing. Sometimes it's about your positioning in relation to him when you start the stab. You gotta understand how far to your side they can get while you're going for the stab. For example, here I understand that going forwards and backwards would allow this medic to get around me. So I go sideways and backwards. As for this scout, I sort of get stuck here and he gets this far to my side. At this point, I don't even go sideways, I just go backwards. The reason I'm bringing this up is because once you learn the forwards-backwards stab, you tend to instinctively go forwards even if you don't need to. Like here, had I gone sideways backwards or just backwards, I would have been more likely to get behind him. This stab is essentially just backwards. If they get to your side, that's all you need to do in order to get it. This means that even if you happen to fail a matador, remember how they get to your side like this when you matador? If you go for a matador and you notice that you failed in time, you can go backwards to recover and get the stab. Now if you go forwards and backwards and they take it wider, you can recover by going sideways and backwards, eventually gravitating towards them then going backwards. Now this is all very subtle and accurate movements and they're hard to see but once you do it yourself you'll understand. Essentially you need to get him on your side and then go backwards. You get him to your immediate side before you go backwards to get him. Essentially there's no forwards part to this stab. The stab's purest and best form is when you go only backwards. You can get the best players on level 4 by doing that. While doing it, you're also going sideways in one direction. But unlike in the level 1 circle strafe stab, you're not pushing into the space behind the other player. You're going backwards into the space behind yourself. Now, starting the stab from far away like this with backwards requires a lot of space. So typically, you want to try for the sideways backwards or the forwards backwards stabs. Now. When you go forwards and backwards against people, even when they get to your side, they're still pulling sideways to some extent. So when I say you go backwards, you're going backwards and sideways. Let's take a look at this spy here. I go forwards and he pulls sideways as I go backwards and sideways with him. Not going sideways while you go backwards will just result in you not hitting him and him staying too far to your side. And of course, when I say go forwards, you're actually going forwards and sideways towards the guy. Now, they won't always pull sideways when you're going backwards, but it's important that you understand that you're going to have to be the one who gets close to them, that they're not running directly at you. Now, people on level 4 often get to the walls while strafing because they're pulling sideways so much. Now, as we remember, getting a stab on the wall on a person who's strafing towards you it's just a matter of just luck. It doesn't really happen normally that much. But getting a stab on the wall on a person who's strafing away is the easiest thing ever. Usually, no form of matador or circle strafe would work on a person who's strafing across the wall with his back against the wall like this. Again, except for when you get extremely lucky, that is. A lot of people feel safer with their backs against the wall. When you go forwards, they turn. By going backwards, you can get the stab. So generally, when you see a person straightening across the wall like this, for any reason, you can just go forwards and backwards and get him right there. And it doesn't have to be across the wall. I see this guy straightening across here, trying to attack from the side. So I just know, 
what I can do against that. Every time that you see a person strafing across, even just for a second, that's a golden opportunity for you to go for this stab. Now, at the beginning of all of this, I told you about the hard time I had with identifying this level. But why is that? It's, it's just people strafing across, you can see that instantly. Trying to get around you, it's obvious. The thing is that not everyone attacks like this while they begin to attack, when they're still far away. They're not attempting to attack from the side, it's just that when they get close to you, letting you pass becomes their reflex right there and not before. Meaning that they're strafing towards you until the last second. The only difference being is that you don't get it, you just don't get the stab and that's what confused me so much. I see the guy strafing towards me, I click at his side, the knife raises, there's crit sound, but you'll never get the stab on them like this. Now this means that they can attack like this, not coming anywhere near you, or attack like that, making you think that you're going to get level 1 stab, except that you don't. In the end they were doing the same thing. See they might strafe towards you for a second, before going around you. That's just how level 4 works. It chains itself with level 1. Now of course this means that the level 4 stab that you try on them will work in both situations. But no matter how much it looks like it, you can't get the level 1 stab on these people. It can't replace the level 4 stab and the level 4 stab can't replace the level 1 stab. For example, this is what happens when you go forwards and backwards against someone who's on level 1. I know that this spy is on level 1, and the level 4 stabs are not working on him. So only when I start using the level 1 stab instead, that's when he starts showing his back. It's about matching your movements to what the other person is doing. Now, knowing that these stabs don't collide can help you. When you see a guy running at you, and you think he's gonna back off, and he just keeps going, when you're in a tight hallway and he tries to get to the other side or if he just gets to the other side then that's a great way for you to understand what he's really doing and to understand that you can go forwards and backwards to get him. Now, when people who are on level 4 are strafing across the wall it's always going to be the outer wall of the turn that they're in. Now what does that mean? See this scout? Level 4, this is what he wants to see. Ignore the stab for a second. He wants to see where he came from, he wants to see where he's going, he has both doors on his view, he has his back against the wall protecting him, and he's attacking from the side. This is what a person on level 4 wants. He wants to see this bigger picture. He wants to stay safe in all those ways, or at least some of them. Sticking his back to the outer walls of the turn, keeping you on his view, taking things wide, attacking from the side. When you see a person like that, you know what to do. So level 4 has a lot of uses to it. Some people just run at you with it mindlessly and some are trying to be careful, strafing across some wall or something. Getting around someone can be both a completely defensive act and a completely offensive act. There are people who just constantly want your side aggressively. And if they want your side, sometimes you can give them your side. Of course, if a person tried to aggressively get to your side and got stabbed, being defensive afterwards doesn't mean that he stops being on level 4. He won't get any closer to you, but if you get close to him, he's gonna fall for forwards and backwards. And if you don't go forwards and backwards, he's gonna keep eventually strafing to your side anyways. Now you may be asking, how can we even stab a person like that, who keeps himself safe in so many ways? How can you go forwards and backwards and get the stab on a person like that? Well first of all, usually this is what happens, this is the most you can do, typically. But when people are strafing around you like this, they don't expect to even collide with you. If they get behind you, it's because you ran at them, going for a matador. But most of the time, they're just trying to stay safe. Now all of this brings me to this next point. People on level 4 typically don't expect to collide with you, they expect to stay away from you. 
Some people are better at taking wider strafes, but that doesn't stop your level 4 stabs. And that's mostly because they expect to get to your back, but not to your immediate side. When you force it onto them like this, there's not much they can do. But then again, some people eventually get used to people showing them their side. They don't turn by reflex when you go forwards, they turn because they're used to it. In other words, they turn sooner. Meaning that when you go backwards, they're already able to turn back at you again. What all this means is that they're going to get to your side and stay on your side without getting stabbed. Now, once you see this kind of thing happening, what you need to do against these kinds of people who turn sooner is to simply time your stabs sooner. Instead of letting them get to your side, you're going to go backwards while they're still in front of you. Only then when they pull sideways and look sooner, you can stab them. The stab itself can start looking less like a forwards and backwards stab both to him and to you when you get it like this, but this is how it works. Of course, it's better if you can time all your stabs against this kind of person sooner like this. But this kind of thing is not absolute. Sometimes he's going to expect it and sometimes he's just gonna turn the look. And if you play it out well enough, you can get him just normally. So moving on to a new topic. In this next section, we're gonna learn a different approach to this level. An approach that would really make it clear why this level is called strafing away as opposed to strafing behind or something like that. And with this new approach, we're gonna learn new ways to execute this stab. I'm talking about a situation in which the angle for your stab would get turned. You'd get a turned level 4 stab. Now what does that mean? Till now, we've talked about two situations in which your sideways strafe can collide with a person who is strafing across. He either gets behind you, or you get in front of him but you can't stab him. Now this situation is where the strafe is edged out. Once that happens, they have to strafe away from you again because they've realized that they couldn't get to your side, they couldn't stay away from you just then. So it goes like that. They can't just back off, they have to inbox you between the wall and them to feel safe. Which is exactly what you would anticipate and would do yourself. Let's take a look at another situation here. Focus on that soldier. Now the stab could have ended like that, but since you strafed sideways and not forwards and backwards, so it ended like this. Inboxing you between walls is what level 4s usually do. By taking the outside of the corners, they want to see the inner wall of things and you. And when the strip gets edged out like this, you disrupt their strength and get them to do it from the other side. So whenever you fail a stab on the wall, you know what to do. Also, obviously, whenever there's some kind of prop or wall, by going next to it, you can understand exactly how they're going to go. This is why C2C2 works so well, by the way. All of these things melt into each other, they chain each other, because they're all a part of the same thing, forwards and backwards. But actually, for these stabs, we didn't really go forwards and backwards, we went left and right. It's kind of like a matador. Well, it is. Every spy eventually gets a stab like that, it's nothing new to see this. But this is not the only instance in which the strafe gets edged out for the people in this level. And I know that a lot of spies who can get this stab could also do something like that. Not really knowing what's actually happening. It's important to understand that these stabs that you're getting are actually level 4 stabs. Although they're basic, you need to understand that they're connected to the forwards and backwards stab. So in this whole section, we're going to learn how to manage your matadors against level 4s. Now other than the walls, there are many, many reasons for this to just repeat itself over and over and over. The strafe getting edged out is actually just a matter of feeling. If he has enough time to see me getting close enough to him, then he's gonna change directions. He's gonna know that he's gonna collide with me. And he wants to stay away. 
it doesn't only get edged out when you hit the wall. See this? This was kind of familiar. He took it wide and I strafed sideways instead of forwards and backwards. And since he had the extra second to see me getting there, he changed directions because he wants to stay away. See, it's a matter of feeling. Whenever they see that your streak might block them, they change directions. Let's take a look at this spy. We both strafe to the left. Now he's taking this turn wide, but it looks to him like he'll bump into me if he keeps going. You can see it, right? So he changes. What we talked about before on the wall is what happens when you really actually block them. And it works in the same way. At some point it really feels like the strafe has reached its end, and you're both changing directions at the same time. It's also a little intuitive. For a second or two, you're both on the edge of each other's view. That's when they change, and you also change. Obviously, this can happen more than once. Uh, it depends on the person's personal reflex, how many times, or from how close he feels like he should do this. Also, as you've seen, this is one of those instances where level 4 can collide with level 1. Don't get confused by them backing off or strafing towards you like this. You can't get level 1 stab on them. Now speaking of the edge of the view, another reason for them to change when it's edged out like this is where they see your side and they think they can stay on your side by changing directions. By timing it correctly, you can actually get to their side. See the spy? He switches to his knife because he saw that he got to my side there for a second. So he thought it would happen again. Let's look at it a little more simply. He backs off here and he sees my side, so he changes directions. He lets me pass because he knows I'm going to turn at him once he's that far up behind me. Now of course I will turn, but I will also strafe so that I stay behind him. People on this level are trying to stay away from you, and what better way than staying behind you? When the strafe gets edged out, they feel like you're going to turn, so they change directions. And you can also feel it if you just look hard enough. Fun fact, while trying to stab people, you're also on level 4 sometimes. Now the same thing happens with this guy. I go forwards and backwards and he gets behind me. And at that point, I know that he's going to change directions to try to stay behind me. This next guy's attacking from behind and I know that he's on level 4. He shot once and he's already going behind me. And I knew that so I went backwards. And he got behind me anyways. And at that point, he's gonna change directions again to try to stay behind me again. It's all the same. Let's take a look at it from the scout side this time. He jumps over me, he jumps over me again and again, and even when he's not jumping, he's going to be getting around me again. And all these things that we've talked about, they all happen all at once and they chain each other. For example, this guy gets around me while taking the outside of the turn, gets edged out, and once he got behind me, he's going to change again. Let's look at this spy side of things. He lets me pass here, and I keep changing directions and edging him out. We end up getting to the wall where I can stab him. Let's take a look at this spy. He spots me immediately and goes around me. Once he gets behind me, he's gonna go like this. Ignore, ignore the NG. Here he realizes that he won't get around me by doing this, so he has to change again because it gets edged out. And at this point, I'm going up the stairs and this place is like a huge turn and he's gonna take the outside of it. By having all this knowledge, you can manage your matadors against these kinds of people, but obviously you don't have to. You can just go forwards and backwards. Get them right there, but I just want you to understand this connection, and I want you to understand how level 4 works with these examples. For example, this soldier here strafing across the wall, I go forwards, sideways, backwards, I get him. And in another situation with this soldier, when it gets edged out, I know he's gonna let me pass, I know he's gonna be strafing away, I can go right and left to get him. Understanding things about players, gathering information is very important for you to get any stab really. For example, this guy spots me and he's gonna move like this. While up on that rock, I think that he's gonna strafe towards me for a second, but it changed with level 4, he's obviously going to let me pass. In this situation, it's pretty obvious, he's just gonna go around me. There's a bit of a blunder here, he pulls out his melee, but he jumps behind me again. 
At this point he's gonna jump behind me again. And I finally realize what he's doing, but I failed the stab. So here he's gonna get around me again. But he's gonna jump back around one more time, more than I expected. So it's like this, and at this point, I know how he's gonna move. So that's it about managing your matadors against level 4s. So you can't just go for anything. For now, let's go over the reverse angle. We've kind of seen it before. Obviously from behind, people are also strafing away from you. When a person on level 4 chases you, even from behind, you have to do a level 4 stab. If they begin attacking while behind you, they will predict that you turn around so they'll try to get in front of you. Or when you do, it's being careful. The spy, for example, chases me and he chases me from the side. See, like this. So I have to go sideways and backwards to get him. Okay, so we go for a level 4 stab, but from which side? How do I know how to go for it? Well, luckily, we've just learned all about this. I go for a level 1 stab on this guy and he lets me pass, meaning he's on level 4, so I know I need to go for a level 4 stab. Now look at this, pretty much everything to my right is a wall, so I know that he's going to try to inbox me like this. So it's the same as going for normal level 4 stabs, you just need to keep in mind the rules of level 4, you open up space for them to get around you just from behind. You wanna keep yourself to the inner walls so they'll have an easier time taking the other wall like they want to. You can just turn around and go forwards and backwards or you can go backwards and then turn around and then go backwards again. It'll all have the same result in the end. A single instance in which from behind they will back away from you, allowing you to get a stab like this, is when before they came at you, they thought to themselves that they don't want to go around you. This pyro, before even starting to run at me, realizes that he doesn't want to position himself between the control point and me in case I move. Same thing with this medic who didn't want to fall off of the roof. Now this has to be a very conscious thought, otherwise they will just turn by reflex. Okay, so as a continuation, let's talk about overhead and underhead angles. Obviously they're being done as level 4 stabs, as we all know, forwards and backwards. Some people will do it very aggressively, trying to jump right next to you or even on you. Others will try to jump away from you and not even near where you were standing. It's still all the same in the end. It's the same for under and overhead angles. Now when you are going for a jump stab, you have to understand that you're not gonna jump straight at him. You're gonna jump sideways or you're gonna jump backwards because he's going around you. Also the same perk that you had on level 1 with the overhead angle happens here as well. In this situation, if I were to strip sideways, I would not get him. But if I jump sideways, I ignore bumping into him and I can still get the stab. There are many ways to go for an overhead angle on players who are on level 4. You just have to be creative about it. Now speaking of creativity, if there's anything level 4s like doing, is pulling tricks. Trying to get around you consciously, much like spies. Now, any trick a spy would go for is just a very accurate, basic level 4 movement. If you manage to just step back at the last second, you can counter them. Any impro stab, any blind stab. By running into it, you're moving forwards, and by backing off at the last second, you're stepping backwards. Now, there are a lot of people on level 4 who know about corner stabs and trick stabs and will consciously move in those ways in an attempt to outstrip you. For example, the Spyro, he sees this corner, he goes right and left, and I can counter him like this. Now obviously they don't have to be on level 4 to jump at you from the corner, but for people on other levels, it looks different. And obviously, for people who are actually on level 4, things are different. When they back up into a corner and they see that you're chasing them, that you're too close, they're gonna let you pass. Now that's just because they're taking wide corners as reflex, not because they know about trick stabs. 
they were backing away but you were too close and it got edged out so now backing away is to the other side of the corner let's take a look at this the spy is gonna back away from me into the corner it gets edged out because I'm close enough he changes and then he changes again as it gets edged out again just level 4 stabs now whether people jump at you from the corners consciously or unconsciously it doesn't really matter as long as you know how to counter it obviously you counter corner stabs by just taking the corner wide uh, very simple but if you want to get a clean stab then that's not the best way to go about it because spies will see that you've taken it wide it gets edged out and they're gonna break away from you you gotta make it appear as though you ran into the corner and that there is no point in breaking away now you can do that by running straight at the corner and then breaking off going sideways or sideways and backwards or something like that this is how you can make sure that they turn and that's because what they wanted has happened you ran straight after them now it's very easy because the corner is there telling you what to do you run at it and you go sideways and you run at it and you go sideways now the more risk you'll take the more chances you'll have of getting it obviously but it's actually very very safe eventually you'll learn to manipulate this to your advantage completely and very easily now obviously all of this is just a turned level 4 stab when you run at the corner and break away then it's just like going forwards and backwards only from this angle like so think about where they want you to turn and then going backwards instead of running forwards it's just that not turning makes it a little safer because you know the exact angle of how it's happening now we'll talk more about spies later for now I want to talk about something else I told you we'd be back to doing this earlier this is the continuation of the level 3 section now level 3 is special because it always has another level that comes along with it it's what the person would do when he's not strafing around the people that we've seen so far on level 3 are people who are both strafing around and strafing towards meaning they're both on level 3 and 1 it's level 3 slash 1 this means that once he's done strafing around or once you catch him while he's not strafing around he's gonna be strafing towards you that's how we jump straight for the back pedal step, like here. And that's how they can choose to strafe backwards once they reach the edge of their strafe. But if you really look at the movements, you can understand that this kind of thing could also happen. He can just break off like this. This is what people who are both on levels 3 and 4 are doing. Breaking off level 3 at the edge of their strafe and going level 4 on you letting you pass instead of backing off so before we dive into this level 3 slash 4 I wanna get some obvious stuff out of the way first off just like how you can jump straight to the back pedal stab with levels 3 slash 1 you can jump straight to the forwards and backwards stab against levels 3 slash 4 which means if he chases you either from behind or because he thinks you're getting away he's not gonna be strafing around he's gonna be chasing you with level 4 let's take a look at this guy I know that he's on 3 slash 4 so when he chases me from far away I go for a level 4 stab but now I'm facing him it's head on we're fighting he's gonna be strafing around so I can just do it fast enough to get him with a level 3 stab but wait, we've just talked about how that shouldn't work. I mean, they'd let you pass. I mean, even if they strafe very fast, their last strafe is supposed to end like this, by reflex. They normally shouldn't fall for a level 3 stab. See, even if you predict their fast strafes and get to their side, their reflex is going to save them. They're going to be strafing away from you, right? Well, if you have some crazy surprise angle, you can get a level 3 step, like what's gonna happen here. But in all other cases, it shouldn't happen. For example, this guy's chasing me right now, strafing across the wall. Doesn't work out at first, so I do a little bit of the manage your matador techniques. Get a level 4 stab. Next time I see him, we'll fight head on. But I know that once I get close to him, 
he's not gonna be strafing around anymore because I had nothing sneaky to throw at him. I know that he's gonna stop strafing around and I should go for the level 4 stab to get him. So it works kind of like what you'd expect. He's gonna be on level 3 but eventually when you get close you're gonna switch to 4 especially if you give him the opening. See I'm strafing mostly on the right side of this corridor right now and he tries to pass from the left, forwards backwards. Now you're rarely going to get the forwards backwards stab on him while facing him head on like this. You will mostly get them with the manager matador's tactics. See once you get close he's gonna be strafing away just like this. Meaning that also when he almost gets behind you and when you almost get behind him the strafe is gonna get edged out and you're going to be able to pull a level 4 stab. It means that at times he's going to try to inbox you between the wall and himself. And all of these things will melt into each other. This guy keeps letting me pass while he's moving around. And it gets edged out as we both get to the wall. And I can stab him right there. And obviously, remember that people who are on level 3 slash 4 still do all the crazy stuff that level 4s are trying to do to you. Like jumping at you from the stairs or jumping at you from the corner. Let's take a look at that guy. I try to level 3 him and he keeps going. But how much you wanna bet? that he's gonna use this turn right here as a corner and try to corner stab me with it. Now this probably gives you all a very specific idea right now and it should. Even though they usually go level 4 at you which is really hard to counter there's still one consistent way to get people on 3 slash 4 if they're doing one specific thing and that's if they're trying to outstrip you using left and right to get around you. Up until now, we've been talking about people who are strafing around for the sake of being fast. But some people are strafing left and right to consciously try to outstrafe you and get away from you. Let's look at the spy side again. Now it all really looks the same to them. You either run at them and they feel like they should let you pass. Or you run at them and they feel like they should go left and right. Literally trying to sort of matador you with his gun. Now sometimes he will succeed and sometimes he will not. Now that only depends on how you move. They can control where you look but not where you'll be in front of them or to their side. For example this guy he strafes to the right and at this point he expects me to turn and he expects me to get out straight and to stay in front of him. Now of course I turn but I ended up at his side instead. Now the thing about people who are trying to outstrafe you is that the closer you get to them the shorter their strafes will get as they continue trying to outstrafe you. Let's take a look at this guy. He goes all the way around me but he sees that I turn and the next time he goes right and left to try to mislead me better. Now to you the stab can even look like a leading stab but it's not about how it looks to you. One very important thing that you have to understand for this stab to happen is that it doesn't depend on how you see it. It only depends on how he sees it. What movement he even does to outstrip you only depends on him. For example here at this point he understands that I can't pass him right here and he's gonna feel like he's going to be able to outstrip me again or at least keep me in front of him again. See here, I try to strafe over from the left and I see that I can't pass him but the next time I correct myself and he's not going to correct himself because it worked out for him that first time. So mostly you need to make him think that he's gonna outstrip you, that you're just running at him or that you are strafing but he'll be able to get to your side or get out of the way of your shots. It's not about tricking him because whether you try to trick him or not he's gonna do the same movements. He's either gonna let you pass or strafe both directions. What you need to do is try to intercept one of those with the level 3 stab or the level 4 stab accordingly. Okay, now we've looked at a lot of these stabs, but we haven't really learned about how to make them choose what you want them to choose. I mean, how can I be sure of whether he's gonna strafe me by letting me pass or by going left and right? 
So let's take a look at this guy. Once I go to his side, it's easy for him to let me pass. But once I just run at him like this from the middle, it doesn't look to him like he can let me pass by only going in one direction. You need to understand that if you run to one of the spots, you're running to his side, you're leaving a lot of space for him to let you pass. So in order to get them to outstrip you with left and right, you need to teach yourself how to run at their middle. See, when you pull out your knife, you naturally go sideways. So you're going to have to use some unnatural movements. You wanna use glue. Now glue works very well on people who are trying to outstrip you because their strafes get shorter the closer you get. And that's the kind of thing you want for glue. When you strafe sideways you're still away from them so they can afford a long strafe. And when you strafe forwards at them with glue, since you're moving with this angle at them, it doesn't look to them like they can let you pass. Let's take a look at this. I miss a perfect opportunity to do it here by reflex and my reflex keeps taking over I strafe to his side and he lets me pass I try again he lets me pass again pass then I try for glue and he uses left and right let's take a look at this guy I keep going for his side and so he keeps letting me pass so I can only get him with a level 4 stab but here he's gonna be strafing left and right really fast and then he's gonna take a very long strafe to the right. So I just know he's gonna strafe back to the left. And I let him do it so I could get him with his next right strafe. See I glued myself to him. I predicted where his middle would be and I stayed there. Now even if you're using glue this is all very subtle movements. Even if you go for it it might not look the way you want it to look for him at some times. Keep on trying though. Now on a finishing note here, let's talk about some possible things for 3 4. Some people can switch it up and strategize with it. For example, some people will get around you with level 4 and then start strafing around when they're at your side. Now, for the most part, you can just get them with either stab if you just predict where they'll be, either to your side or in front of you. But really, this kind of thing only depends on the individual. You're going to have to see what they're doing and figure it out for yourself. For example, this guy, we fight around trying to shoot each other. For a second there, he jumps to my side and then immediately goes back to where he was before, strafing around. So now the next time he does this, I know exactly how to move. He was showing elements of doing this before, getting around me and then backing up instead of completing the move. Meaning that even if he's stripping across, if I go forwards and backwards he will back off. So even though it has elements of level 4 in it, I should always go for the level 3 on him. So that's it about level 3 slash 4. But speaking of people, who are going right and left in order to mislead other people. What about us spies with matadors? It can go like that, but it can also go like that. Getting counter stabbed is one of the most confusing things that can happen to you in this game as spy. So, um, just let me tell you how to do it to all your best friends. Spying is such a delicate art. Of course, then we go and exploit every little thing about it, like this. Oh well. Well anyways, we already know how to counter more of the more known trick stabs already. They are all, without exception, being done with level 4 movements. By running into it the way the spy wants you to, you go forwards, and by backing off at the last second, you go backwards. But for now, we're gonna focus on how to counter matadors. Now obviously Matadors, what we think of is the level 3 stab, right? He leaves you some space, and you go for it. But unlike with the level 3 stabs, you don't really rely on predicting spots that much. A good spy who really knows how the Matador doesn't just do it by strafing left and right repeatedly. They move around, they shoot, and they try to make you buy the direction. And of course you buy the direction, but instead of going at them, you go sideways. 
It's kinda like level 3, but it's not. You wait for him to leave you the space to go for, and then you go for that. But it's not really about level 3. It looks more like level 1, they gravitate towards you. So it's actually even further than level 4. Whenever a spy fails his trick, this guy just jumped or something, he's gonna strafe towards you right after that because he feels that he can stab you at that point. So it's not so much about the level 3 as it is the 1, just keep strafing, predict that he's going to gravitate towards you, sometimes even backwards. Eventually, even if a spy is strafing around, and it seems random, the moment you'll take a wide strafe around him, he's gonna have a longer strafe towards you. Just like how I gravitated towards the demo man over here. But looking even more closely, even though they might be strafing around at first, if you bump into them, it'll get edged out, and they'll do a level 4 movement. So like we've expected at the beginning, even a matador is essentially a level 4 movement. It'll turn into it even if initially it's done by strafing left and right. So when the spy is done doing his thing and you're still facing him, you can probably get him with one of the other level 4 stabs. The same rules apply, he takes the outer side of the corner wide like that, and when the strafe gets edged out, he's gonna change directions, expecting you to look, and when you're both at the wall, he's going to try to inbox you between himself and the wall, and really, you could try for any level 4 stab. Now, you can go forwards and backwards in a lot of ways. But one of the best ways I find for doing this is while facing the spy for a split second, just run at him and bait him to go around you. His reflex will make him do this because once he's out with the knife, he wants to capitalize on that one split second in which you're running into him to matador you. Now, it sounds dangerous and obviously it is, he has a chance to stab you when you're going forwards against him. So you just might get matadored anyways. Now although all matadors can end the same, in the end we do have a level 3 matador and a level 4 matador. And because of all of that, a spy with the knife out can always be treated as a level 3 slash 4. You could take him with both the level 3 stab and the level 4 stab. Let's have a look, I miss the forwards and backwards stab, and then he goes right and left, and I get him. But once again, despite all of this, good spies have a preference. For example, this guy I get him with the glue stab, which is a backpedal stab, like the level 1 stab, like the level 3 stab, and it's stupid of me to go for a level 4 stab against him here when he's obviously not going to go around me. Now depending on how things go, I might eventually make him go around me and get a level 4 stab, but initially, as I start facing him, he will never do it. I need to go for a level 1 stab. Now again here, I get a perfect chance to go forwards and backwards, but I know that this spy doesn't go around me that much. I know that he's gonna change back directions, so that's the stab I go for. But all of that is just the movements. Spies have a thousand tricks, and it's not always about the knife. They're not always gonna have a shank out with you. You need to know how to get yourself into that situation. Some spies will only shoot at you and some will just run away. And even while knife fighting, some spies are very very difficult to get. For example, this guy has only short strafes. He doesn't want to walk into me like this. And stabbing him is not gonna be that easy gonna have to shoot him, push him to a tight spot, and only then could I go for it. But there's also an upside to all of this. People who usually would have been juking while not stabbing you have to at least have short strafes while they're trying to matador you. You can't matador with jukes. Your last strafe has to be longer if you want to stab. This means that instead of going for glue on spies who are juking, if you know that they're going to try to stab you, you can just predict that and counter them going for the stab more normally. And some spies just like shooting before they stab. Anyways, you just have to read the intensity of the situation. Go for the better angle if you can. Make it obvious but safe. Try to intercept with the other spies gun knife ratio. Try to know when to go for it. Since you won't always answer to your knife fight. Now, every spy goes for a matador. Some go for it aggressively, like that guy, and some only use it as a last resort, like this guy. 
but every spy does it eventually. Whether they're weak and they see the opportunity, or they feel like you're just running at them, every spy will eventually do it. Now good spies who know you will probably not go for it immediately. They shoot, they try to avoid, they try to do stuff. But in the chaos, after all of that, every spy goes right and left as you get close. And with time, you'll know how to time it and use it to your advantage. Now every spy does it eventually, even if they tell themselves to stop. For example, it's often a spy's first reflex to matador you when you randomly run into each other like this. Also, it could be that you force the spy into it. Look at this, I'm just gonna run at this guy. He tries to back off, but as I get closer, it becomes a very logical choice. You can force it onto them. Sometimes if a spy is running at you like this, shanking you and hitting you, it becomes your only option to try and stab him. So it's either that, or you can just run at them and make it look like you're gonna fall for it. Like it's the best thing to do right now. Just run straight at them and break off at the last moment. Now, good spies are used to circle strafish stabs. They know that this kind of thing can happen, even if they don't change directions. So, you can sometimes bait them into doing that too. Strafe straight sideways. Make it feel safe for him to strafe across some wall into you or a stab and go backwards at the last second. Don't go for it like you'd usually go for sideways backwards though. You risk getting stabbed by doing that. What you want to do is strafe sideways, then at the last moment, look at him as you're going backwards. But please, please remember that even if you look ahead, you look at him again to stab. You're adjusting, he can still slip by and get you. But since you know about it while doing it, then it's not that likely to happen. So this is a nice example here. I strafe in long straight lines, baiting him to strafe across the wall to get me. Then I go sideways and backwards to get him. Now to counter stab a spy, you have to make sure that he's actually stabbing. Some might just try to shank you and shoot you. And some are just straight up trying to shank you. They can sometimes seem far away and difficult to stab. But remember that even if he stays far away, you can get closer to him. Now speaking of adjusting your angle, this is something very important that you need to understand. A spy's average strafe is way shallower than the strafe of someone who's just moving around. That's because they're expecting you to run straight at them while stabbing. Meaning that you don't really need any backwards strafes really. Just a nice sideways strafe can have you avoid most stabs. Again, as long as you're strafing, even if you don't see it coming, it's very hard to get you with a trick stab. Now every spy is capable of doing those, but what about circle strafing spies? Spies who know as much as you know. Now the both of you are trying to get the better angle for when you collide, but when you collide, and it doesn't matter how, it's gonna turn into a backpedal stab doesn't matter how you collide with him, you can go forwards and backwards and get him, and you can go forwards and backwards and get stabbed yourself. And anyways, it's always about the levels 1 and 4. They counter each other. For example, a circle strafe on this guy who's on level 1 ended this closely because at the end of a strafing towards strafe, there's always strafing backwards, which is pretty much going sideways and backwards. See, the last moment is the only thing that matters. Now, as the other spy's movements become more precise, it gets more difficult for you to do whatever you want with him. Winning a circle straight battle is not like winning a back battle battle, which usually means you just got further back than the other person. Winning a circle strafe battle is more about where he looked, it's about the adjustments, and not about who gets further back. And also logically speaking, the more you reveal your back to a spy, the more he will turn in order to stab you. You see, when a spy is circle strafing, even if he's doing it very carefully, he's pushing into you, which means he doesn't detach from you. Now this means that you can go for the stab from the inside much more easily than normal. You don't want to go for a stab normally, you want to spot his long strafe 
just spot his stray and don't try to take it wider than him. Run into him, let him almost get to your side and that'll make him turn his view for the stab. Whether it's level 4 or 1, you run into the spy and pull sideways for the split second backpedal stab that we know going for the stab from the inside. Let's take a look at this, he goes left, I know he's gonna go right, but I don't try to take it wider than he does. He will turn by himself to stab me. Now this is not something that you can pull on everyone, only on spies and only when they're trying to stab you. You can go either sideways or backwards, just don't turn too much yourself. Now on a finishing note here, sometimes you will attempt a stab and he will get completely behind you and... Yeah, sometimes a spy is so laggy that it's not even worth fighting with him. Sometimes it could get pretty ridiculous. Uh, let's take a look at this next frame right after this one. It can get painful, it can get a little painful, knowing that this kind of thing can actually happen. Working so hard on knowing what to do and timing it right, and then just having it blow up in your face, quite literally. If you catch yourself or the other spy, warping around or lagging or something like that, stop immediately. Because no matter who wins, there will be nothing to gain from it. If you don't stop, I can assure you that something horrible, HORRIBLE will happen to you. So, yeah. Try to avoid fighting spies like these. But don't give up on fighting spies altogether. There's so much you can learn just by fighting with them. Not just knowing what to do, but understanding angles better. Knowing how it really feels is not something that you can do by watching videos, but only by experimenting and experiencing it yourself. And this kind of thing is not possible to do against a soldier who has rockets and splash damage and people who just mow you down the moment they see you. It's possible to do with someone who's initially equal to you. So fighting spies is a very important part of stabbing and a very important part of learning and getting better. So even if you get robbed sometimes, don't give up on it. Well you guys, we've reached a certain milestone. We've covered all the basics. What we'll see in the next videos will be considered the more advanced stuff. So stick around and I'll see you then.